Hi, Jerry Kafitz here again, and I'm talking to you today about how a good church becomes a cult. This is video number three in a five-part series. And what I want to point out to you today in this video is basically this. On the way to becoming a cult, or as a good church develops into a cult, somewhere along this pathology, we come to the place where we understand that a church's reaction to criticism becomes very, very negative. I always think that the best example for the Christian in terms of how to respond to criticism was given by Jesus' disciples when he challenged them and he said to them something that must have hurt them terribly. Toward the very end of his ministry he said, one of you will betray me. And each one of those men looked at the Lord Jesus Christ and said these words. They said, is it I? Is it I? So when somebody challenges you, when somebody challenges me, the first thing we need to do is not to look without, but to look within and say, could this be? Could this be? Does this apply to me? Could I be guilty of this? That's the position of humility and that's the example that we see in Scripture. I was in a church one time, big church, Baptist church, and uh, one day I noticed that one of my friends who I hadn't seen in services in a long time just seemed to be absent. So I went to where he normally sat and asked the person who sat behind him, where's uh, brother so-and-so? And that person looked around like this and leaned over and whispered to me and he said, so-and-so developed a critical spirit. He developed a critical spirit. And I just thought, well, what does that mean? Are we supposed to check our uh, uh, ability to have critical judgment at the door of the church? Can we never disagree with anything that's said or done? Is there no process in the church for an intelligent, rational person, a believer priest, a member of the assembly, to have any disagreement? with the leadership in the church? Is there not a process for that? Is that something we should fear? In this church, it was something that they feared. And that person knew that they were not welcome in that church because of their disagreement. This same church one day found itself with a deacon who had been accused of child molesting in, in, in the church, on the premises. And that church stood behind that man refused to look at the possibility that he was guilty despite overwhelming evidence, despite his arrest, despite his conviction, despite his imprisonment, kept him on the deacon board the whole time, and the position of the church was deacon so-and-so is not capable of this kind of sin. Well, I've got news for you. There's only one in the history of the human race who was incapable of sin and that's the one we worship, and that's the Lord Jesus. This church was so petrified of criticism. This church was so petrified of, of, of falling off its, its, its self-imposed and self-constructed pedestal that it could not tolerate this kind of criticism. And the demand that this church made for loyalty among its members was inflexible. You couldn't disagree. There was no process. Ultimately, this church developed what we call a siege mentality. And every time something like this occurred within the church, the wagons would be circled tighter and tighter and tighter. And the suspicion that was directed outward from this increasingly tightening circle became greater and greater and greater. Well, I'm sorry. That's not a healthy church. That's a church that has isolated itself that's a church that becomes a blight on the name of Jesus Christ, and that's a church on its way to becoming a cult. I'm Jerry Kafitz.